what are the best DevOps tools you should be using in 2021? Actually, that's a marketing stunt. Let me rephrase that by saying, what are the best tools for developers and operators and everything in between in 2021? And you can call it DevOps. I split them into different categories. So let me read the list. And that's IDs, terminals, shell, packaging, Kubernetes distribution, serverless, GitOps, progressive delivery, infrastructure as code, programming language, cloud, logging, monitoring, deployment, security, dashboards, pipelines and workflows, service mesh and backups. I will not go into much details about each of those tools that would take hours, but I will provide the links to videos or descriptions or useful information about each of the tools in the description of this video. So go down if you want to see a video, if I made one or maybe a link to the homepage of the tool or some useful information. Let's get going. Let's start. For IDs, the tool you should be using, the absolute winner in all aspects is Visual Studio Code. It is open source, it is free, it has massive community, massive amount of plugins. There is nothing you cannot do with Visual Studio Code. So IDs, clear winner, Visual Studio Code. That's what you should be using. Next are terminals. Unlike many others that recommend iTerm or this or that different terminals, I recommend you use a terminal that is baked into Visual Studio Code. It's absolutely awesome, you cannot go wrong, and you have everything in one place. You write your code, you write your manifests, you do whatever you're doing, and you have a terminal baked in. Use the terminal in Visual Studio Code. There is no need to use an external terminal. Shells. The best shell you can use today is ZSH, not Bash, ZSH, combined with oh my ZSH. Just as born again shell or Bash, ZSH is based on Bourne shell, so it is fully compatible. It is based on POSIX. Both of them are based on POSIX. You will feel at home and it features some really great things. It's not that it does things that Bash cannot do, but if you combine it with oh my ZSH, you will get some awesome experience. If you're using Windows, then install WSL or Windows subsystem for Linux and then install ZSH and oh my ZSH. Next, packaging. How do we package applications today? That's containers, containers, containers. Actually, we do not package as containers, we package as container images. That's a standard now. It doesn't matter whether you're deploying to Kubernetes, whether you're deploying directly to Docker, whether you're using serverless. Even most serverless today solutions allow you to run containers. That means that you must, and pay attention, I didn't say should, you must package your applications as container images, with few exceptions. If you're creating CLIs or uh, desktop applications, then package it whatever is the native for that uh, operating system. That's the only exception. Everything else, container images, doesn't matter where you're deploying it. And how should you build those container images? You should be building it with Docker Desktop or Docker if you're building locally. And you shouldn't be building locally. If you're building through some CI-CD pipelines or whichever other means that is outside of your laptop, use Canico. Canico is the best solution to build container images today. Next in line, Kubernetes distribution or service or platform, which one should you use? And that depends where you're running your stuff. If it's in cloud, use whatever your provider is offering. You're most likely not going to change the provider because of Kubernetes service. But if you're indifferent and you can choose any provider to run your Kubernetes clusters, then GKE, Google Kubernetes Engine, is the best choice. It is ahead of everybody else. That difference is probably not sufficient for you to change your provider, but if you're undecided where to run it, then Google Cloud is the place. But if you're using on-prem servers, then probably the best solution is Rancher. Unless you have very strict and complicated security requirements, then you should go with OpenShift. If you want operational simplicity and simplicity in any form or way, then go with Rancher. If you have tight security needs, then OpenShift is the thing. Finally, if you want to run Kubernetes cluster locally, then it's K3D. K3D is the best way to run Kubernetes cluster locally. You can run a single cluster, multi-cluster, single node, multi-node, and it's lightning fast. It takes a couple of seconds to create a cluster and it uses minimal amount of resources. It's awesome, try it out. Serverless. And that really depends what type of serverless you want. If you want functions as a service, 
AWS Lambda is the way to go. They were probably the first ones to start, at least among big providers, and they are leading that area, but only for functions as a service. If you want containers as a service type of serverless, and I think you should want containers as a service. Anyways, if you want containers as a service, flavor of serverless, then Google Cloud Run is the best option in the market today. Finally, if you would like to run serverless on-prem, then Knative, which is actually the engine behind the Google Cloud Run. Anyways, Knative is the way to go if you want to run serverless workloads in your own clusters on-prem. GitOps, and here I do not have a clear recommendation because both Argo CD and Flux are awesome. They have some differences, there are some weaknesses, pros and cons for each, and they cannot make up my mind. Both of them are awesome, and it's like arms race, you know, Cold War. Uh, as soon as one gets a cool feature, the other one gets it as well, and then the circle continues. Both of them are more or less equally good. You cannot go wrong with either. Progressive delivery is in a similar situation. You can use Argo rollouts or Flagger, you're probably going to choose one or the other depending on which GitHub solution you chose because Argo Rollouts works very well with Argo CD, Flagger works exceptionally well with uh, Flux, and you cannot go wrong with either. You're most likely going to choose the one that belongs to the same family as the GitHub tool that you chose previously. Infrastructure as code has two winners in this case. One is Terraform. Terraform is the leader of the market. It has the biggest community. It is stable. It exists for a long time and everybody is using it. You cannot go wrong with Terraform. But if you want to get a glimpse of the future, of potential future, we don't know the future, but potential future with additional features, especially if you want something that is closer to Kubernetes, that is closer to the ecosystem of Kubernetes, then you should go with Crossplane. In my case, I'm combining both. I'm still having most of my workloads in Terraform and then transitioning slowly to Crossplane when that makes sense. For programming languages, it depends really what you're doing. If you're working on a front-end, then it's JavaScript. There is nothing else in the world. Everything is JavaScript. Don't even bother looking for something else. For everything else, Go is the way to go. That, that, that rhymes, right? Go is the way to go. Excellent. Go is the language that everybody is using today. I mean, not everybody. Minority of us are using Go, but it is increasing in popularity greatly, especially if you're working on microservices or smaller applications. Footprint of Go is very small. It is lightning fast. It, just try it out if you haven't already. If for no other reason, you should put Go on your curriculum because it's all the hype and for a very good reason. It has its problems. Every language has its problems, but you should use it even if that's only for hobby projects. Next in line, cloud. Which provider should be using? I cannot answer the question. AWS is great. Azure is great. Google Cloud is great. If you want to save money at the expense of the catalog of the offers and the stability and what's or not, then go with Linode or DigitalOcean. Personally, when I can choose and I have to choose, then I go with Google Cloud. As for logging solutions, if you're in cloud, go with whatever your cloud provider is giving you, as long as that is not too expensive for your budget. If you have to choose something else, something outside of the offering of your cloud, use Loki. Loki is awesome. It's very similar to Prometheus. It works well. It has low memory and CPU footprint. If you're choosing your own solution instead of going with whatever provider is giving you, Loki is the way to go. For monitoring, it's Prometheus. You have to have Prometheus. Even if you choose something else, you will have to have Prometheus on top of that something else for a simple reason that many of the tools, frameworks, applications, what's or not, are assuming that you're using Prometheus. Prometheus is the de facto standard and you will use it even if you already decided to use something else because it is unavoidable and it's awesome at the same time. For deployment mechanisms, packaging, templating, I have two. I cannot make up my mind. I use Customize and I use Helm and you should probably combine both because they have different strengths and weaknesses. If you're an operator and you're not tasked to empower developers, then Customize is a better choice, no doubt. Now, if you want to simplify lives of developers who are not very proficient with Kubernetes, then Helm is the easiest option for them. It will not be easiest for you, but for them, yes. Next in line is security. For scanning, use Snyk. Snyk is a clear winner, at least today. For governance, legal requirements, compliance, and similar subjects, I recommend OPA Gatekeeper. It is the best choice we have today, even though that market is bound to explode and we will see many new solutions coming very, very soon.
Next in line are dashboards, and this was the easiest one for me to pick K9S. Use K9S, especially if you like terminals. It's absolutely awesome. Try it out. K9S is the best dashboard, at least when Kubernetes is concerned. For pipelines and workflows, it really depends on how much work you want to invest in it yourself. If you want to roll up your sleeves and set it up yourself, it's either Argo workflows combined with Argo events or Tekton combined with a few other things. They are hand in hand, there are pros and cons for each, but right now there is no clear winner. So it's either Argo workflows combined with events or Tekton with a few other additional tools. Among the tools that require you to set them up uh, properly, there is no competition. Those are the two choices you have. Now, if you want simplicity, if you want a service, if you want not to think much about pipelines, but just go with a minimal effort, everything integrated, what's or not, then I recommend Codefresh. Now, I need to put a disclaimer here. I worked in Codefresh until a week ago, and you might easily say that I'm too subjective, and that might be true. I try not to be, but uh, you never know. Service Mesh. Service Mesh is in a similar situation like infrastructure as code. Most of the implementations are with Istio today. Istio is the de facto standard, but I believe that we are moving towards Linkerd being the dominant player for a couple of reasons. The main one being that it is independently managed. It is in the CNCF foundation and nobody really owns it. On top of that, Linkerd is more lightweight, it is easier to learn, it doesn't have all the features of Istio, but you likely do not need the features that are missing anyway. Finally, Linkerd is based on SMI or Service Mesh Interface, and that means that you would be able to switch from Linkerd to something else if you choose to do so in the future. Istio has its own interface, it is incompatible with anything else. Finally, the last category I have is backups. And if you're using Kubernetes, and everybody is using Kubernetes today, right? Use Valero. It is the best option we have today to create backups. It works amazingly well as long as you're using Kubernetes. If you're not using Kubernetes, then just zip it up and put it on a tape, as we were doing a long, long time ago. That was the list of the recommendation of the tools, platforms, frameworks, what's or not, that you should be using in 2021. I will make a similar video in the future and I expect you to tell me a couple of things. Which categories did I miss? What would you like me to include in the next video of this kind? What are the points you do not agree with me? Let's discuss it. I might be wrong. Most of the time I'm wrong. So please let me know if you disagree about any of the tools or categories that I mentioned. We are done. Click the subscribe button, like the video, hit the bell icon, do the things you usually do. See you in the next video. Cheers.